Hi everyone, just wanted to let you know that there is a little bit of audio trouble in the beginning of this episode. It will mysteriously get better around 10 minutes. Um, the problem was solved, so I hope that you enjoy this episode um, and thanks for listening. Hello and welcome to the Next Canon Podcast. On this podcast, we are working to recreate and reimagine the American theater canon to make it more representative of what we want it to be. I am so excited because today we have my dear, dear friend, Shannon Johnson. Say hi. Hello, everyone. Shannon uses she, her pronouns, is an artist based in Seattle right now and is in a show with the Dirty Darlings, our dear friends, the Dirty Darlings. It comes, it's on the 18th and it is called Lube. Very exciting. Get your tickets, sign up for their Patreon, do all that fun stuff. But Shannon, hi. Hi. <laughs> well, tell the audience a little bit about yourself. Yes. Um, hello. Um, I grew up in Snohomish, which is a little bit north of Seattle, and obviously made my way down to go to Cornish. I have a corgi named Cora. I love her to pieces. Um, I'm married to a wonderful graphic designer, uh, Zachary. Um, I also love Disney. I am a Disney adult certified. Um, I because of that, I also um, work for a company called Seattle's Princesses, where we take on the, the characteristics of lovable, um, well-known characters and dress up and go to, basically go to kids parties. It's wonderful. I adore it. Um, I also am a trained wedding planner. That is something that has been a little more recent development. So yeah, all that jazz. <laughs> That is so much fun. So what was it like for you at the beginning of the pandemic? Like what was going down? Let us know what happened. Yeah, uh, I used to work for um, a coffee company. I had worked for them for four-ish years. And so I was there when the pandemic started. It was very nerve wracking. I remember being at like a little crafting night. And then I saw like the announcement of like all the restaurants being like closed. Like I thought I was going to lose my job. Um, definitely started having that um, panic there. I was very lucky. We did not close at all. Um, when we were deemed essential, everyone was like, oh, thank goodness. Um, so that basically became my life. I just went to the coffee shop, wore as many masks as deemed necessary. I started wearing a mask like the moment um, it was recommended, not mandated. And mm -hmm. it was pretty stressful, to be honest. It was a really stressful environment. I mean, having to tell everyone like, please, yes, you have to wear a mask, please. Yes, <laughs> you have to do this, follow the protocol. No, you can't sit down. Like when it was like phase one and such. Um, and I just realized it made me think about like all the things, um, that I did not like about the company yeah. and uh, I left in March. And so I'm rocking that unemployed artist life. This um, March or last March? This, this yeah, March. You went the whole year. I went the whole year and went on this roller coaster. I was, I was the lead barista. So I was basically assistant manager mm -hmm. and I just had so much on my plate and they, it, it didn't feel fair. Uh, and I had to fight to become lead because I had worked at a previous location where I was lead. I transferred over and they're like, oh yeah, by the way, you're not going to be lead at this location. And I was like, okay. And so I had to kind of fight for it. Um, which in their eyes made perfect sense. But to me, it left me feeling really like let down yeah. and unappreciated and just kind of built up from there. And when we had some snow in February, I made it my prerogative to find something better for me and my mental health. Um, because yeah, as a diabetic and with my husband who's diabetic, when the pandemic hit, we were both petrified. <laughs> yeah. And like, there was like this one like week of denial that like we were living in, like, it's fine. It'll just go away. Um, my mom always likes to send me the news. So I was like, oh, my mom's just sending me another piece of news. It's not going to affect us, whatever. And then like, once it became serious, I was like, oh, we, we need to take this even more seriously than just like in general. And yeah. So there was all that anxiety bubbling to, um, while I was working and Zach started working from home. So we had to readjust. 
Um, and we were in a one bedroom apartment at the time. And um, he had to make the living room his office. And so I would be like, hey, Zach, because he'd be always home. And he's like, no, shh, I'm working. I'm on a call. <laughs> I was like, ah. <laughs> and it's like that deciding of like, do we make the bedroom the workspace and like bring that into like where we sleep and rest? Or do we put in living room and it has to just be everywhere all the time? And like, yeah, we have just like tiptoe to the kitchen. So it was definitely like at the beginning, this whole turnaround. But like, I think for me, the positives have been this is the most time I've ever spent with Zach since we got married. Um, he used to commute to Bellevue. So it was just, you know, we just didn't get to see each other as often as we would have liked. And we were really lucky in this, you know, sort of forced time spent together that we, some people I feel like in, you know, during this time have found out things about their partners and maybe have decided to make a different choice. And we're really lucky that we just like fell even more in love. So very, very grateful. I honestly, during this whole pandemic, while I've been anxious and stressed, I have been so lucky. <laughs> uh, like I, I got to choose to leave my job and I had a lovely time spending with my husband. So it really was nice. So you mentioned you have diabetes. Yes. Yeah. So I was just sort of wondering as an artist with diabetes, what misconceptions do people have about both the disease itself and like how that affects you? Yeah, well, as an artist, like specifically, it can be really hard to manage my diabetes during a show or at all in general. Um, during rehearsal, like my blood sugar will go low or too high. Um, if my blood sugar is too high, it affects my singing because um, mm -hmm. it really dries out my throat. Um, and uh, I, I can tell the difference when my blood sugar is high and I'm trying to sing versus when my blood sugar is totally normal. Um, it can also be a little nerve, like nerve wracking to tell directors or, you know, potential employers that you have diabetes. Um, my, one of my favorite stories regarding this is um, an artist on American Idol, she didn't tell anyone on American Idol that she had type one diabetes because she was nervous. They wouldn't, um, like accept her or like allow her to be on the show. And that's a real, that's an actual fear. People do like, they're like, ah, I don't want to hire her. It could be a problem. Just don't want to deal with it. Liability, blah, blah, blah. And uh, yeah, <laughs> I roll, I roll. I roll, and I roll. <laughs> it. And so she didn't tell anyone and she had a medical emergency on the show. She couldn't perform one night because she was in the hospital and ended up, ended up being better, either better for their marketing or whatever, um, that they were like, no, you can always tell us. It's so like, we're so glad you're okay. And, you know, for whatever reason that was, I hopefully out of, you know, good intentions and really just like, no, like we really didn't know. Um, but like, that's a real fear. And so it can be nerve wracking telling, like going up and like, I had to tell my teachers, and I was like, I feel like I'm a child. I feel like I'm a child. My mom was like, okay. Cause my mom, I was diagnosed when I was three. And so my mom was like, okay, this is the routine. When you like have a new teacher, you go up to them, you tell them that you have type one diabetes and that sometimes you might have to eat food because that was also a problem, like eating food. And I know some people can be really strict during rehearsals about having food in the room. And that I totally hear that. And it does make sense, but I do, if I don't tell them, like trying to hide it and be like, it's fine. I don't need anyone to know that could be a repercussion is like, yeah. you know, not asking for what I need. Um, but it does sometimes make me feel a little, like a little, like standing out during a rehearsal. If I'm like, I have to sit here and eat food. But I mean, especially at Cornish, like people would start carrying Skittles in their backpack when we had classes together. And they were always like, Shannon, what do you need? Is your blood sugar okay? And this community, I would say, has been really, really wonderful. And like every day moving forward as we educate each other, um, a, a lot of people are just more accepting. And all they do is like, what do I need to know in case there's an emergency? How do I know an emergency? They don't say, oh, well, maybe you should sit out, you know? So it even though that fear is still sometimes there, the community in Seattle has just been so lovely and supportive because there are a lot of misconceptions about diabetes. Um, specifically, I would say revolving around type two diabetes. Type two diabetes is viewed as, yo, oh, if you don't take care of yourself, oh, you must be like so overweight and in a negative, you know, and 
they're like, oh, you probably eat pizza every day and like only drink soda, like all these things. That's, that's what we think of type two diabetes in general, especially in America. Um, and really type two diabetes can be like triggered by really minor things, like just having it in your genetics. It has to be kind of in your genetics in order for it to even be a possibility. Um, but, and sometimes sure, like exercise can help or eating right can help, but sometimes that's not, sometimes it just needs medication. Mm-hmm. Um, and there it's even more evolving, like the learning we have. And instead of, I think, replacing the type two with the new type, they just call it type three. And it's basically type two diabetes that acts kind of like type one and type one diabetes is where the pancreas just stops producing insulin altogether. It's like, nope, we don't like to do that anymore. Um, and I have to do everything myself and I have type one. Um, and so does my husband. That's how we met actually. <laughs> and uh, at a diabetic conference uh, so and uh, <laughs> I, <laughs> it's really, I'm like, you know, I used to think I didn't, I was like, oh man, I didn't get like a, a storybook or a rom-com like meeting. And I was like, Shannon, that's a lie that you're telling yourself <laughs> actually uh, is pretty damn cute. Um, but like, we have to just be on top of it all the time and take care of it. So when that does come into play, like during rehearsals and stuff, I just have to be proactive and, you know, my biggest supporter in that or else people just won't know. Yeah. So in the theater realm, what is, what does the word canon mean to you? When I think of canon, I think of like overdone musicals that they do in high school like Mm -hmm. they've done this forever fan of the opera like all these sort of things specifically I mean I think of pajama games stuff like that Mm -hmm. they just throw them at the high schoolers and they're like once they've been done enough like you know and the licensing is you know clear for education that's what I think of and uh, and I also think of unfortunately a town kind of like mine a small predominantly white um very I would say racist and homophobic town. And so that's who you see on stage. Not all of them, of course. There's, I mean, I try I, to think of myself as like someone who's always learning. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know that there are people um, from Snohomish as well and in that community that are always learning as well. And I don't want to generalize, but I do think of that. And that's also reflected and reaffirmed when I go to places like the big theaters and the touring theaters in Seattle. And I see a lot of that reflected. And so that's probably why I have that connection. It's like what I saw on stage growing up, predominantly small white town is basically almost exactly translated to a lot of the big stages. Um, Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And that's a place where like, I think this is such a good time because everyone's starting to ramp their stuff up and like, it's planning time. We got to plan better. <laughs> like let's plan Absolutely. better and like spread this out so that everyone can, number one, everyone can play. And number two, let's not hurt anyone. Let's just, yeah. let's think a little bit and not hurt anyone. <laughs> like at all would love that. You're not going to be perfect. No one, theater companies never going to be perfect. Never. Ever. Absolutely not. Every, because yeah. everyone has their own opinions. You know what I mean? And that's mm-hmm. a lot of what I've learned doing the podcast and what I intended during by doing the podcast is like, get everyone's opinions, synthesize what seems right for you. You know what I mean? But also <laughs> let's be better for our communities. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. I feel like, especially like growing up, it's so important to see yourself. Mm-hmm. And that is a really broad spectrum because we have a huge spectrum of people on this planet and we should all be able to see ourselves when we look on stage and something to like look up to. Exactly. Um, so in that sort of canon, I, that's, that's how I see the canon too. Like, that's what I would have thought initially. Mm -hmm. Um, season one, episode one, our dearest Hayden, a ring wear was the one who told (laughs) me about, uh, me about what a canon was because they can talk 90 miles a minute about it and like, tell me all the things. Oh yes. We love Um, them. We do. And, uh, so they told me about it and that's sort of how my concept of it goes. Like things like Shrek seem like they're canon to like the, to the, the young kids at the theater. Sometimes like Putnam County spelling bee things I've never Mm -hmm. seen too, that I'm like, Oh, that's canon because people do it all the time. Exactly. Yes. Yes. (laughs) 
<laughs> but yeah, so some of them, some of them have got to go. So what's your show that's got to go? I have a very like sentimental memory attached to this show. But the more I think about it, the more I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> and I already said it, the pajama game. It is, it tries to be a very like woman positive show by, you know, oh, she's assertive. It makes her different. But I think we've moved on from needing that to be the only piece of the show. And the show is cast in a predominantly small town, presumably small white town. There is no LGBTQ representation whatsoever. In fact, I do believe they mock it and people still put on the show. And I find it vastly inappropriate to be doing a show that mocks literally anyone for who they are. I, it really, it pisses me off to be, <laughs> and I don't understand why we keep doing it. It's kind of like I mentioned earlier, when I try to think of like, why would we do a show that directly outcasts people and directly doesn't include people and it just breaks my brain. I can't, I can't think of an answer. Right. And I don't, I think that means that we got to get, got to go. It's like something we can think of in our memories. Like I'm a, I had a positive theater experience with the show. Sure. And it did spark like a, I want to do theater kind of moment, but I was really lucky because I happened to be a small little white girl in a little town that decided to do this show. And that meant I got to feel those feelings. Well, I want everyone to be able to feel those feelings. So I think it's time to put it in the back seat. We can look yeah. at it like that was nice, maybe one time, but we don't got to keep doing it every single year. Yeah. Recently, I've been thinking of the me metaphor in this way to like, just put it on the shelf for a little bit. Yeah. Because yeah. It is show that's got to go with air quotes because it's cute and rhymey and it evokes a feeling like it, that, that concept evokes a feeling. It's like, it's got to mm -hmm. go. Um, but it is also just like, I'm not burning these books. You know what I mean? And yeah. no one is going to. But let's just take a break <laughs> and focus on stories that do give people that feeling. And that feeling exists. Those stories exist. Those playwrights are working right now to make those stories. You know what I mean? So it's like investing in those will just, because I, I relate. I had that same feeling of like, oh, I see myself or like, mm -hmm that sort of, that sort of feeling is like, yeah, we are, there's so many reasons why we have white privilege. And that is such a small one that you don't even think about. Oh yeah, like, absolutely. I, I'm, I think about it. I find out something new every day. I'm like, of course, because of this. And because I think those things, I do think I'm learning and I'm really trying and I know I'll always be learning. It's never like I stop and I'm like, I'm a good person now. <laughs> like <laughs> you got to keep the work up. And I think that's why people stop. They're like, oh God, I'm exhausted. exhausted. I'm just going to be mean and horrible <laughs> instead. <laughs> Seriously. That's like, it, it, I've had conversations mostly with people in, um, slightly older generations where they're like well I don't think that way about a person like if you if you see a person on the street and you lock your car doors what did that person look like why did you do that like you have to catch yourself in it before you even realize you've mm -hmm. done it in a lot of ways and that is the root like you said of like the learning process it's like we have inherent biases they're there they're there because they mm -hmm. were built into our what we know as normal and if anything breaks our norm there we we go oh what's that why 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 and so it's like, you have to address it. So something kind of has to happen in your body for you to be able to see it and learn from it and recognize yeah. it. But yeah. you have to be open to that. <laughs> and like, yeah, exactly. And like put in that energy and that effort. Cause I feel like a lot of people, they have those moments. They're like, oh, I just judged someone based off of this. Very simple. Like it's breaking it down to the most simple thing. And some people go, okay. And they don't try to question it. And I think it's having that, I mean, honestly, like open mind and that curiosity and that want to be the best. I, I believe in kindness first. That is like always something that I've believed in and that's not kindness. Mm -hmm. So if I ever catch my brain thinking something or going that way of like, oh, I think I judged them for that. I'm like, oh, well, why would, why would I do that? That's not kind to them. And I think about them and then I can move on knowing I can always put kindness first yeah 
And you do feel it when you start to, when you start to notice and make adjustments in the moment, like not to, not to say, oh, I'm so great. I'm not, I'm always learning. But like, I had a moment where I was standing outside of a cheesecake, not a cheesecake factory, but a cheesecake shop. Mm -hmm. And man rode by me or like he was coming up to me on this bike because I'm just like waiting for my cheesecake outside the store and um happened to be a black guy on a bike and he rode past and I could feel myself being like don't judge him like right off the beginning of the bat like don't judge him just like the brain had to say it and then he rode by and he said I look so cool on this bike <laughs> I was just like yeah you do as he rode away have a good day <laughs> oh yeah I was like, yes, you look so cool on that bike, man. Like, it just, like, changing the, like, thought process, like, uplifted the day almost. Like, I was like, that guy looked so cool on that bike. (laughs) It was just I want everyone to feel that elation because, I mean, just not putting, like, that the kindness, like, first, it just makes you feel bad. Like, why would you want to feel bad? Why would you want to feel bad? Like, (laughs) no one should feel bad. Or, like, talking yourself (laughs) into being scared. Like talking Mm. yourself into it, being Mm -hmm. like, I'm scared of this. I'm scared of that. If I go down here, it's going to be scary. If I go to this street in town, it's going to be scary. Like it's not like, it doesn't have to be. Yeah. (laughs) Absolutely. The dangerous things don't happen (laughs) and you can be scared of dangerous things, but like, you don't have to talk yourself into that. (laughs) I think that's why I really enjoy mindfulness because I think that we generally just need a lot more of that in theater. We just need to be more mindful. And I know that some people would say, what, we're, you know, oh, theater's already so, I don't know, PC is, I, I hate to use that in like a negative context, but that's yeah. a lot of what people say in the negative context. And it's like, it's not trying to fit in or be hip or like with, you know, in, oh, it's 2021, you know, you know, I, it's just being mindful and learning. And I think right. that the, you know, I think theater is working on it a little. Mm-hmm. They like are make, but I want them to make strides, not yeah. baby steps. <laughs> right, exactly. In the spirit of wanting them to make strides, can we let them know what show they should be doing? Can you give them a show you should know? I really enjoy the feeling that I got when I watched Ride the Cyclone. Yeah. And I really think shows. I I really enjoy that show. And I think shows like that are kind of in our future. I think it'd be helpful for me. We start with our youth and that show is about high schoolers and they go through this tumultuous experience. Um, I like that that show you can, it can be diverse in its casting. There's not a lot of like things that are like cemented into the story so you can have everyone and it can tell a different story every time and I think that's also the beauty of theater is you never see the same show twice and I believe that young people seeing that show or a show similar um, would spark that same feeling of that's really powerful this song just made me feel this way this movement on stage made me want to move and it is inspiring in that way of inspiring our youth to just uh embrace their creativity because I feel like there is a lot of there's still still a lot of shaming about people wanting to create art at a young age clearly this is very (laughs) um close to my heart because I even though I mean I obviously have an enormous amount of privilege. I did not have a good experience with a lot of my artistic teachers in school. And that, and yeah, (laughs) I did not have an enjoyable, specifically choral experience. And it made me really not want to sing. And that's one of my favorite things to do. Mm -hmm. And I think that shows that inspire that even when you're going through a negative situation, even when you maybe don't have you just don't have that support maybe. And I think shows that spark that and like persevere. And they're like, no, I'm still going to have this feeling, even though I'm going through all of X, Y, Z, you know, it's really inspirational. Yeah. That show, like remembering parts of it, like every time I think about it, I think of a different part. And like, Mm -hmm. to me, it's like, it's actually kind of spooky. Like it really is. (laughs) Like it really is. I mean, I (laughs) thinking about kids, maybe not making it to the next moment in their lives ever right. uh, <laughs> is a little 
it's really sad. I think yeah. that's why it puts things into perspective so much. It's one of those classic kind of your life could end at any moment. Mm-hmm. What do you want to leave behind kind of moments? And I, I think those are really, those are really good in a way, I think for young people to see, you know, cause some, sometimes I feel as someone who was bullied in, in elementary school and middle school and all that, it could inspire maybe someone to go, I'm going to think about something before I say it, or I'm going to also think about where someone else is coming from before I respond. And I think we need more of that. A hundred percent. Like it's, it's got such a spooky undertone and like kind of a terrifying, like through line, but yeah. like then the music makes you feel good. And oh, then you're like, the, it lifts you up. I did like this movement a lot. Like what oh, you yeah, yeah. <laughs> want to move. Like I was like, they're riding the cyclone and like, I don't know. It's just like, you're so right. It, it's one of those things. that's like, the funny thing is Hayden, Hayden always says that that's like the music is very dated for the time it was written. And I'm like, I live for that. <laughs> fun. Um, I like think if it works, it works. Or whatever. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, <laughs> well, also a- it probably is written almost geared towards a specific generation. Cause maybe that's why I felt so attached is like the <laughs> musical style that I was listening to, like 2010, end of middle school into high school. Like those, that's a time that really, even if you want to forget it, or even if you have forgotten it, it, it does make an impact on our life. And like that music will trigger those memories. And, you know, even if a lot of them maybe were negative, you still have those positive memories. And the music for me, like really helped me get through a lot of like negative experiences growing up. And so hearing that music probably really just was like, I can do anything. (laughs) It's like, I, that's so true for like all music. I went to right before we, uh, started uh, recording today I went to the swimming pool by my house and then I went, took a shower mm-hmm. and then I came upstairs and I was like I need a song and it's it goes like this and I was like what is this song called like where is it and I was just like hey Juliet I think you'll find yeah. you really blow my mind maybe and I was just like I need that song to play and so I like with being the 2020 that it 2021 that it is I was like hey Siri <laughs> play hey Juliet and I it's called Juliet not hey Juliet but I was just like play it and it did it knew exactly what I was talking about and I was just like instant gratification for that nostalgia <laughs> absolutely I found myself a lot like I re-listened to all of the One Direction albums over the pandemic <sighs> I listen I've been listening to a lot of throwback jams it's like my go-to like if I need to put on a playlist like I put that on and I know part of that is the science behind it you know what's coming so your brain doesn't need to worry about any surprises or have any anxiety so it's so soothing I definitely especially like and also with movies like I'm gonna watch all the rom-coms from the 90s and the 2000s like this is like the comforting level of like I know exactly what's gonna happen I don't have to worry yeah (laughs) exactly I definitely did that when I came home to my parents house at the beginning when I was like peak anxious of getting the virus because Mm -hmm. we were in Seattle, which was an epicenter at the time. Oh, yeah. Um, (laughs) I forget um, that sometimes. (laughs) I'm terrified. Um, So I think I watched like the the Chris Pine Star Trek movie because it's my favorite oh, one. Um, yes. <laughs> all yes. of, both of them I think um and then I watched Greatest Showman like things that I knew would like make me feel bam, 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 like very Absolutely. Like, <laughs> higher vibration than I was feeling and wouldn't like stress me out like Greatest Showman can be stressful but like you know it's happening like you know it's gonna you know it's gonna do that and that's a newer one even like mm-hmm those the old ones that you know too like sometimes my brain tries to trick me into thinking I've never seen something and I'll lean over to my like whoever's around me and I'll be like oh does she do this and then this happens does this happen and then that happens like it'll try to like it's like you don't know how this story ends what if she does this and then (laughs) you've seen this 20 times (laughs) like why are you watching the Hunger Games again (laughs) oh my gosh I did have a Hunger Games moment I watched all of them I I tried I haven't finished the book yet, I, but there's like that new one that came out. About there's a new one life. that came out? Yeah, it's about President Snow. And I don't think it's the story we re- need right now. I'm stressed. I haven't I finished it. Like that sounds anxiety inducing. I listen, I- It is about like the 10th Hunger Games ever. And oh. Snow was one of the mentors because they used to have people from the Capitol be the mentors. And it's like, I'm trying to find out like, how do we- 
how did we make the monster? Is that the story? Like how the monster become the bee? But he's really just a cocky asshole. And I don't yeah. like hearing his, what he has to say. <laughs> so yeah. um, I have not finished the book. <laughs> I've definitely reread um, two of my favorite series is, or favorite series is from uh, the same author ever. It was a Tamara Pierce uh, novel. It's just like, badass like girl trying to be a knight like she's like I don't care about these boys I'm trying to be a knight and that's like both of the series is but in different generations and so the first generation is then the adults uh, or like the adjacent adults in the next series and it's just like girl power all the freaking way like here we are oh yeah like let's go ham let's be the best of the best and the boys can't touch us like they don't know like they, they can't. And so it's amazing. I, I've read it since I was 13 and I've read like all of the books in that universe, like multiple times. I love that. Books like that. Also, I will like music and then books, like <laughs> books really, um, help me through middle school. I would go to the library once a week, fill up of like reusable bag. And then like, be like sometimes halfway through the week, sometimes at the end of the week, be like, Hey mom, time to return. We got to gotta get a new bag, get a new bag. <laughs> go back and forth to the library and like <laughs> books like that like those like badass empowering books and that's another I think canon that we can talk more about of like needs a lot more yeah. <laughs> um inclusivity because I I could see myself in every book every book the protagonist was little like white girl with like either blonde hair brown brunette was really in for a while because nobody wanted brown to be blonde. Is a thing people uh-huh. wanted to say Oh, yeah, exactly. Like, is that this color? Like, what is this? This is strawberry I don't even, blonde, but like, listen, I don't know what mousy brown is, no, I, but I I've assumed never met that it was my with hair. Brown. <laughs> I was like, that's fine. That's close enough to my hair. I like that. I can see myself. And I want, again, like the musical theater canon, everyone should be able to see themselves. Exactly. And I've been trying through this pandemic to try and find books that I can like they're out of the things that I want to grab like yeah. I just go to grab all those like YA kind of inspired novels and there are some really fantastic ones absolutely some of the writing is beautiful the stories are very catching and like I want to read them and I want to keep those mm-hmm. and also keep expanding my personal library as well absolutely that's like a whole other podcast talking I know about right it, right <laughs> I love it I love it so much and I think it was so I don't know why I think I don't know what was happening but all of 2020 didn't read a single book all of 2020 not a single one but 2021 I've read mm, like at least 10 already because I got into that hole and I was like Cassandra Clare gonna read all of these ones like (laughs) I was like read all the things I'm reread and all that stuff it's just like that's such a healing thing that I forgot was a mechanism I could use to keep me happy you know like to keep my endorphins up and all that stuff which is so important (laughs) I think also like sometimes the reading new books is just like watching like new movies or going and seeing something new um that's something that my therapist told me like if I'm in a bad like if I'm having a bad mental day if I am having a rough time then don't do anything new because the brain will start to get nervous and just think about all the things that could happen, especially with like my anxiety of like thinking about all the things that could happen. We just don't know. Even if it's like, are they going to pick up that key, you know, off the ground, you know, Mm -hmm. in like a happy rom-com it's like, your brain doesn't need the additional stress. So Are maybe, they going to get together? Is he going to leave her? Is something yeah. going to happen? Like Even if it's so stuff. simple, like something that's not like life-threatening or perhaps triggering, it's something that's like the, you know, brain doesn't need any extra stress. So don't do anything new. And I think like all, a lot of 2020 for me, that's why I regressed and did all the things that I knew. Definitely participated in the Twilight Renaissance. Definitely, you know, like, would like I wonder like what high school me would think about this you know like stuff like that regret you know kind of going backwards and uh, (laughs) right yeah I I wouldn't I'm like what if high school me like time traveled to the future it's not everyone wearing masks what would they think and I don't know why why that was my brain's coping mechanism but it happened a lot and I think (laughs) it was just like that calm of like trying to like think of things I knew and trying to like I you know the whole world has been turned upside down so finding things that are like, you know, comforting is really important. That's so true. And like, um, this popped up just a second ago for me when you were saying like, I could see myself in these characters. Um, Do you know what aphantasia is? I don't. 
So aphantasia is something that I have and uh, a couple of my friends have it as well. It's where you don't have uh, the ability to see things in your mind's eye. So reading a book is not like watching a movie to me. It is similar conceptually. So like oh. mind's eye for someone with aphantasia and it, there's a huge spectrum of like how much of your uh, mental eye is turned on like I can sometimes smell in my in my mind like I know that cinnamon roll smells like xyz you know or mm -hmm. I can fully hear like songs in my mind like I can sing them I can do those those high notes like I can hear them in my head like crystal clear vision zero could not could not in picture anything in my head and as an artist I always thought that like I thought originally like, oh, this is, this is all metaphorical. No one's doing that. Like no one's actually seeing things in their head, but there there's times when people will be like, okay, lay on the ground with your eyes closed and picture uh, a, a cabin. What, what color is the cabin? What environment are you in? Are there trees? Is it a lake cabin? Like, where are you? And I had to be like, well, give me a second. I'm going to have to make some decisions about that. <laughs> like it doesn't, it doesn't just pop up. It's yeah. like, it's like, I have to make a decision about where I'm at, what, what it is. And like, I, it could be blue. It could be pink. It could be fuzzy. It could be whatever it is. Like yeah. they, if you're looking at that. And um, I, I learned because when I was little, I was talking to my mom. I was like, Hey, I think it was like uh, middle school or so. I was like, so when you read a book, what do you see in your head? So what do you see in your head when you see it, when you read a book? I generally see, I think like flashes to me. Yeah. It's like a like a little, like if we are, I don't know, looking at film, like really fast and ra like very rapidly. And I, I really do have to think about certain, like, okay, I have to stop and think about this gown because mm. I want to know what it looks like. And I want to be able to picture it for, fully. Or sometimes I'll read a description and I just see it. Yeah. And like I'm thinking of specifically my most recent like book I've been reading, A Court of Thorns and Roses. And I can see that glittering, glimmering pool of starlight, made of starlight. I can see it, what I think it would look like. But so other things I do have to think about. Yeah. And so like my mom was like, oh, I see a movie. I watched the movie in my head. And I was like, oh, what? And, then, <laughs> and I went, I see basically sometimes I will black out while I'm looking at the page like I won't see letters but I also won't see anything like I'll just be in like a trance of like the knowledge brushing over my brain mm -hmm. of what's happening and like the concepts and like I'll sometimes skip descriptive stuff that I don't care about anyways it's like I'm not going to see that again you know I'll like if she was wearing a blah 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 made of blah 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 with this blah 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 color I'd be like okay blah 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 <laughs> like I would just get to the bottom. I want the story yeah I want the story I don't need all the poetic description but like yes. yeah it's interesting because everyone has a different thing like someone I worked with at Cornish was like oh I can see an apple right there the red is so strong and I was just like, wow. And she was like an art major, like uh, graduated multiple years before, worked in the admission Aww. office. But I was talking to her about it and she was like, oh yeah, no, I can see it in my head 100%. And like, not everyone does. Like, and it's actually, there's more artists that don't than you would think. <laughs> but we all Oh just yeah, like, absolutely. Because you had to find other ways to like put that in your brain and had to go out of your way to be, and just like uh, everyone has their strengths and everyone has those things that they need to like, I'm going to put extra energy into learning mm -hmm. how to do that. So that's why I, I would love to contribute part of that to every artist being unique in that way. Yeah, exactly. I don't know why I brought that up, but it just reminded me of it when we were talking. Oh, about absolutely. Um, and I thought it might be interesting for people to hear because people don't talk about it very much in the- No, I had no idea. I had <laughs> absolutely no idea. And I'm really glad that that's something that I know now. And that's a great way to go forward in something like teaching, especially is understanding that everyone is going to have different needs. Yeah, a hundred percent. Like it's, I remember having those uncomfortable conversations with my teachers, like, Hey, I can't see those things you're telling me to see. Like, that's not, they're like, yes, you can. And I was like, no, no, no. Like, listen to me. <laughs> I cannot see those things. And I brought it up in the middle of class one time and everyone in class sort of looked at me. And then one of my classmates junior year was like, well, no one does. Uh -huh. <laughs> and they were, and I, I said to them, I was like, See, I would think that too, because I can't. 
<laughs> but they they really think that they can do that <laughs> and I believe them <laughs> but I don't experience it and then they had like a crisis because they were like I have this thing too I thought everyone was lying when they said to picture this picture oh that my imagine this imagine that <laughs> I was just like me too <laughs> relax it's okay like let me help you through it like not, <laughs> this is not in like some people think it's a huge disadvantage in their life but I'm like it is just the way your brain works yeah to me like for me it is but there have been some people who've lost the ability and that's how we know it sort of is real because oh. there are people who have lost or gained the ability at different times in their lives due to um, illness sometimes due to um, traumatic uh injuries and stuff like that and they've mm -hmm. lost the ability and I'm like that is crazy I've been an affant since birth but like <laughs> but like that's crazy um wow. it's super interesting um so moving right along do you have any shows that are coming up um in, that you would like to promote today Absolutely. We talked a little bit at the beginning about uh, the Dirty Darling show Lube. Um, come get wet with us uh, this hot <laughs> vaccinated summer. Uh, the Dirty Darlings switched to virtual. We started a Patreon. Like a lot of things happened with the Darlings over pandemic. We stopped when we just had like, okay, we're going to meet every once in a while and just like have a moment, talk about life be friends that was like how we were seeing people just like pop up on zoom hang out um and then we were like everyone else is doing it and adapting and you know what we want to do that too and so that's what kind of made us want to start our patreon and work on that and it's been really fun i'm actually the director of the patreon it has been a huge learning process i feel like i've learned a lot more about I've never considered myself a techie person, which is hilarious because my husband is a very techie person. Um, and so I'm, I would constantly call him in for help, but actually what helped me the most was going, I'm just going to troubleshoot it. And like, that's how I learned yeah. the most. And um, I feel really confident in that. And I do love posting our stuff onto Patreon and being able to share, um, we call it our virtual theater. And it really does feel like that. And right now it's mostly focused on all the back like background and creative side of lube you get to see um i've been doing a lot of how-to videos um sweet leilani even does like cooking how-to videos like we really like put all of our not just like our burlesque like creativity but all of our creativity into that basket and uh, we would absolutely love if anyone wants to join you can hit up the dirty darlings instagram um if not you can also just come in person to see a live show which is crazy to think about that we're doing a live show i know um, <laughs> I'm so excited. Um, it is a pool party hosted by the lovely Sweet Leilani. And you know, with the group of the darlings, it is going to be one hell of a ride. Yes. Um, we also um, are featuring our guest artist, Lulu Laloon. Oh, Angel. we love them. We love them. We love they them. are we love so, them. so lovely. Um, They're doing a beautiful act about they're coming out as non-binary. So it is really near and dear to their heart, especially this wonderful Pride Month. And we just want everyone to come and see this wonderful Pride Pool Party. Um, tickets go on sale on June 4th, and we'll also be streaming it for those who would prefer to stay at home. And uh, we will have two shows at seven and 10, and we're doing little VIP tables, other tables. You'll only be sitting with your people that you wanna be with. So we What's are the location? very excited. We are, oh my gosh, it is very exciting. We will be performing at The Give In. Okay. <laughs> um, you may have heard about it from Scarlett, aka Michaela's um, guest appearance on this show. And uh, sh she is actually um, one of the, like, she's been on NPR um, with them. She's, but yeah, she's been doing a lot. She has put so much um, into being a partner of uh, the CBCC. And uh, it is going to be beautiful that we get to be there and also experience that with her as someone who co-owns the venue um, and also gets to perform there. So we are very excited to be there. It used to be copious. Um, so it's in Ballard and lovely little space. And it is a 70s dream, to be honest. <laughs> Does it have an actual pool? Will we be getting wet? 
Oh, there will be absolutely. There is going to be a pool. <laughs> we, you will be getting wet with consent. <laughs> yes, yes. yes. <laughs> be, um, uh, we have floaties. Uh, Olaf may or may not make an appearance. Incredible. Summer is his favorite season. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> that is so fun. You know I adore you all so much. I just want to support everything you have ever done and will ever do. So everyone, <laughs> go go on that Patreon and go get your ticks. Go get those tickets, virtual and in person. I actually might be in town that week, so I'm like, <gasps> maybe I should go. You said the 18th. Oh my god! You yes, said the 18th. 18th. Yes, June 18th. I think Friday I'm be night. In town. Pool party. party. Come to our pool party. <laughs> yes, come bring your friends. Oh my, I don't um, have those. Um. <laughs> oh my God, shut the front door. <laughs> your friends are all on stage. That's why. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. So outside of the beautiful Dirty Darlings and that amazing show, do you have any self promo that you'd like to um, throw in there? Yeah, I am a trained wedding planner. That is something that I started doing over pandemic. I took a course with the American Associated, uh, America's Association of Certified Wedding Planners. They're wonderful. They, I learned a lot from them. I feel like they also still have some learning to do in regards to that canon. Um, <laughs> that, and that is something that I want to put into wedding planning. So um, I hit me up any planning, even little things. I'm very excited to plan like little bachelorette parties, yeah. all that sort of stuff. I also own a um, pasty shop on Etsy. It is Betty's Bang and Boutique. I make it my mission to be at, I make it my mission to make every pasty cost the same because everyone has different nipples. So it is a very important News to me. Flash. <laughs> Everyone's nipples are different. So I make it my prerogative to make sure no one feels like they need to do more either like payment or like, oh, I've got to put in like really specifics. Like I will take literally, I don't, I don't care. It doesn't matter. Like if you're like, oh, I want way bigger ones because even though I have small, you know, smaller nipples, I really don't want them to show. Absolutely. Um, I will make pasties of your dreams and I really love doing it. <laughs> Yes. And I mean, I'm just going to say like Shanene cosplay on Instagram yeah. is super That fun. is true. Super <laughs> fun also. Um, I love to cosplay um, along with the realm of like Seattle's princesses. I love to cosplay different characters. Mainly, I do a lot of Snow White. I do love her. She's near and dear to my heart. Um, and that community is so great. Ever thinking about cosplaying, just like literally message me. Um, that community is wonderful. And I've learned so much. I now know how to steam a wig and make it curly and make it stay that way, yes. which is something I did not know without the wonderful community. So also would love to hear from anyone who wants to get into cosplay yes i will put all the links and all of the everything into the bottom of the description wherever you're at uh except for apple music doesn't let you do that so um it'll be everywhere else apple uh, music get on top <laughs> of it <laughs> um but it'll be all over my instagram as well as you know all the places i am so grateful to have had you and my very last sneaky question which you might know is who would you like to see on this podcast? Oh, oh my gosh. Literally, I, I adore everyone that we went to school with. So I really love the idea of maybe going to the educators of the people of our uh, classmates. Um, I adore all of our professors. I, I think you could literally just put a, a take a hat, put all their names in uh, and pick one. I think it'd be lovely to hear from them because they are the ones who have taught us about the canon. And I think that'd be great to hear their perspective. That is such a good point. Thank you so much for coming. It has been literally so fun catching up with you and going yes. on those little tangents and all of that. <laughs> Thank you so um, much for having me. Of course, of course. All the dirty darlings are always welcome. I'm spreading everyone out. I have so many different friend groups vibing with like the content. So I'm like spreading everyone out. Yes. <laughs> so I can get everyone in there. I love it so much. I'm so grateful. Thank you to everyone who is listening today. Um, I wouldn't 
Couldn't do it without you. Wouldn't want to because you're amazing. So please go give us a like, a follow, a subscribe, a share it with your friends. I don't know. Do whatever you're supposed to do on the platform that you're on. Um, thank you guys so much. And we will see you next time. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye.